Now to the Aussies living in Bali's harsh lockdown. As the holiday island is ravaged by its worst wave of COVID yet, expats are uniting to help our Balinese friends. This is without doubt one of Bali's busiest roads. There's usually bumper to bumper traffic here every single day. Unfortunately, the Delta got ahead of it all and we're now back in, you know, big numbers of infections back in lockdown. We had a lot of hope in the beginning and hope seems to be slipping away. This is not how most people picture the idyllic holiday islands of Indonesia. Our hospitals are under pressure because they're running out of oxygen and all the ICU beds are pretty much full. So it, it's quite serious. Mass graves as the death toll from COVID-19 soars, while poverty rates also hit record highs. I've never seen anything so grim in my whole life. Australian chef Dean Cadell has lived in Bali for more than 15 years, but he and his family have been living in lockdown for the past 18 months as the country currently goes through its worst wave of the virus yet. Things are dire, things are uneasy, people are stressed, people are nervous, people are worried and there's, there's, there's very little hope. His two children have been homeschooled since the pandemic started. And here we are, homeschooling. It's been 15 months of this. They haven't been able to see their Australian grandparents in more than two years. Yeah. Hey, Mum and Dad. We miss you very much. Um, it's hard on my parents as well. My kids are my, my parents' only grandchildren. They don't have any other grandchildren. Dean owns two restaurants in Bali. They've been closed since COVID hit the island. Streets which used to be bustling with tourists and locals, now eerily quiet. My businesses are not my concern at the moment. I, I pay long rents up front and, and my, my businesses are safe. My concern is the 130 staff that can't feed themselves or clothe themselves. In Indonesia, case numbers have hit more than 3.1 million, while the death toll continues to climb past 82,000 people. In Bali, tourists are few and far between. Even the beaches are closed, with police checkpoints lining the now empty streets. Uh, yes, it's a little bit not depressing because Bali is still Bali. Yeah, but it's not good, yeah. It's not like it was before. So instead of asking you to buy something, they're nearly begging you. It's not really about business anymore, it's about their families. This island needs foreigners. Desperate to do something to help, Dean has created a cookbook with his staff. It's sold online and in supporting restaurants around Australia. So far, it's raised over $300,000 for local charities. If people can't come to Bali, then I'm going to bring Bali to them. I have lived here for 30 years and this is by far the worst. Fellow Australian Margaret Barry runs the Bali Children Foundation, which is benefiting from the cookbook sales. It helps educate locals, teaching them to read and write. Now it's just trying to keep everyone alive. It's not only hunger, which is a very serious problem, but it's also the mental health, particularly of the men. They're just so desperate, they don't know what to do, they don't know how to look after their families. Today the team is packing a truck full of supplies to take to some of the hardest hit parts of North Bali. This time, every time we think we're close to a rebuild, it just gets smashed and we're back into disaster. There's no way we can predict hope at this point. Three months ago, locals were hopeful for a travel bubble with Australia to bring the island back to life. Now the thought seems a long way off. Everyone wants the tourists to come back, they wants the Australians to come back, but number one, we know that we're not in a condition where we can ask people to come back. And we know that when people can fly, they, I believe they're going to get on that plane and, and come. They, 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 they seem desperate to, to come back to their favourite holiday destination.